Hey, what's going on guys? Just want to share with you today five reasons why you're not building muscle or losing fat. Now, I'm doing this video, uh, you know, not because I'm going to share like exercises and, you know, what diet and foods you need to eat because this is stuff that's already been like talked about. There's videos on it. There's books on it. You can see all this stuff in fitness magazines everywhere. I'm going a little bit different direction with this and that's why I want to do this video because Here's the thing, we've got all this information on you know, which exercises we need to build muscle, what we need to do to lose fat, we have all the information. So it's not a lack of information that's the problem, we have a lack of implementation problem is the thing. We've got all this information but we, we're not able to, to really implement it and we keep struggling. So we're gonna kinda uncover like all of that superficial stuff and we're gonna dive deeper in because there's been, at least in my experience, I've been doing this 18 years and you know, not only working with my own struggles, but helping other people who have struggled with the same type of issues and finding that it doesn't matter you know, if we have the best diet and exercise program on the planet, if these five things are going on kind of under the surface, they will always, always hold you back no matter what. So we're gonna get right into it. So here's the first one. Um, this one right here, inconsistency okay hopefully I spelled that right but anyway inconsistency right so you know this is where you know we're, we're we're not going to the gym even though we know we need to and you know it might be that you know you plan on going there at the end of the day but you know after a 12 hour work day or a 10 hour or 14 hour day you know at work and you're wiped out and you're too busy or maybe you've got like all kinds of work that came up and you're taking at home or you've got family commitments and things going on, you know, you kind of blow things off, right? At the end of the day, oh, I'll just skip it and I'll go tomorrow. Tomorrow becomes next week and on and on it goes, right? The same thing happens with our diet. We're starving at the end of a, of a long day and, you know, even though we know we need to eat better and change our eating habits and be, you know, eat healthy and all this stuff, we can't seem to stop eating all the crap that's laying around work. We can't seem to stop pulling in the fast food drive through on the way home or whatever it might be. And it just leads to inconsistency. So, you know, here's the thing I found with inconsistency a lot of times, right? There's a couple things. One, um, a lot of times we are trying to do things that we don't want to do or we don't enjoy doing, right? That's number one, you know, and, and number two it comes down to priorities, right? You know, for example, if work and making money comes first all the time, um, you know, and, and you, your health and your goals are coming last, you know, there, there's going to be a problem with staying consistent, right? Because of a, the, the priorities that are there, right? So really work to assess what it is that's, that's making you um, be inconsistent and address that, right? So second thing we're looking at here is no game plan, right? No real game plan, you know, and, and a game plan is more than just going to the gym five days a week to work out or whatever it might be. You know, what a lot of times what happens is we're so focused on the goal that we have. We keep focusing on the goal, but we don't have a strategic plan in place, kind of a roadmap that gets us from where we are to where we want to be from point A to B and from B to C and so on, right? So you have to have a game plan rather than just being focused on the goal because without a game plan, you're going to be going down blind alleys and stand very little chance to get to um, to get to the goals that you've got. Next one here, this is something that's very popular buzzword these days, mindset, right? Wrong mindset. So what I'm talking about here is like there's all this talk about mindset and, and everywhere it's being kind of just kind of dumbed down to like, oh, we're just going to think positive. Um, we just need more willpower and motivation and Maybe I should say it's simplified, right? It's, it's just being simplified into this kind of stuff. We need to want our goals bad enough and, and, and suck it up and all this kind of stuff. And it really doesn't work, right? That's why so many self-help books are being written, you know, to try and get people to achieve their goals when, you know, this stuff has been repeated over and over and it's not working. So what I'm talking about with mindset is really looking at yourself as more than somebody who's just going to the gym, somebody who wants to get fit, someone who wants to lose weight. And it's really about seeing yourself as the person you most want to become. Until you see yourself that way, you'll stand very little chance of changing, right? So really kind of working on that mindset and really looking at who is it that you want to be most and can you envision and see and feel that within yourself? Um, that is a big one here. Okay, so here's another one. We've got same routine, 
I know my writing's a bit sloppy. Same routine. When we go to the gym and we do the same thing over and over all the time, we do the same type of cardio all the time, we eat the same type of diet all the time, you know, and here's the thing, you know, our bodies will adapt to what we do. So if we're not changing things, then, we're, you know, we get stuck in a routine and, and our bodies will have no real reason to change. So, you know, what gets you from point A to point B may not be the same thing you need to get from point B to point C and so on, right? You've got to change your routine up and, um, you know, get out of being locked in kind of that, that same routine. All right, so here's another one that's a real huge one. It's what I'd call inner blocks, right? And, you know, this is really the thing where we, we know what we need to do. We know we need to go to the gym. We know we need to eat more fruits and veggies. We know we need to eat less sugar and junk and all this kind of stuff. We know what we need to do, but we can't get ourselves to do it, right? And there's a reason why that happens. And until that reason is addressed or those reasons are addressed, it's not going to matter what workout you do, what diet you try, because it's always going to be to where maybe you go good for a little while, but then you'll fall back into old habits and end up back where you started, right? You can't um, kind of like out motivate or out train or out diet, you know, what's going on in the mindset if you have limiting thoughts, feelings, beliefs that are holding you back, right? That's the inner block. So identifying and addressing those, that's the most important stuff that needs to happen before you start going into workouts and diet strategies and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'll put kind of an extra kind of a bonus one here because this one's huge as well. And I'll tell you why. It's really no assessment, right? You know, and this is where we're following kind of workouts in the magazines or exercises we see on YouTube or, you know, the, the latest stuff. But a lot of times, like what works for other people may not work as well for us or at all because, you know, we're all unique in what we need and how our bodies are. And, you know, so there, there's no real one size fits all that'll work for everybody. So, you know, unless you are assessing you know, what you need, you're assessing your fitness level, you're assessing where the weak links in your body are and addressing those things. You know, do you have like pain and injuries that are going on that you're working with that maybe you need some, um, some way to work around or to work with them? Maybe you have certain imbalances, muscle imbalances going on in your body that are affecting how you move and affecting your ability to perform certain exercises that you need to lose fat and build muscle. These are all things that need to be assessed and there's a lot more you know, that needs to be looked at. But this is just kind of a basic idea that if you're not assessing, you're always kind of guessing as to what might or might not work. And it really will lead you down a lot of blind alleys. So be sure, be sure, assess what you need, not just what you want as your goal, but what you really need to help get you there. So I hope that that helps you guys. Those are really six of what I found the most powerful reasons why if you're struggling to build muscle and lose fat, I can almost guarantee that at least one of these, if not more, are kind of the things that are really keeping you stuck and struggling, okay? So address that, you know, whatever it is, and do me a favor, leave a comment down below and let me know which of these really stood out for you the most. Which is kind of your big uh, kind of kryptonite for Superman, right? What is it, the, the biggest one that's holding you back? Let me know, and uh, let me know how this works for you. And until next time, I hope that this helps you guys. Give it a shot, work on these things, and I guarantee you it'll be a game changer and help you get the results that you want. Take care, I'll see you next time, and be unstoppable.